So today I'm talking about the AudioStorm Reactive Load. This is a load box or a dummy load designed to take up the entire output power of your valve amplifier to enable direct recording and other similar tasks. What makes this unique is that it is not only fully reactive, but also has different reactive modes that are not tone mode, they actually change the reactive curve of the inductors and the physical systems inside here. So they change how your amp interacts. So we have two controls. We have inductance and we have damping. First of all, inductance. Inductance is the number of windings of copper on your voice coil. So a low inductance is similar to a low power speaker with less windings. A high inductance is similar to a high power speaker with more windings. Also a 16 ohm speaker, actually. 16 ohm speakers tend to have a slightly higher inductance. What that means, a higher inductance, is that it affects the high end more. So what you'll find is that a low inductance speaker will be a more tightly coupled. Now, this is a really important term. Coupling is not tone. It's sort of, it's like a subtle tone, but coupling is how well our tubes and power from the amplifier, which are a very, very high voltage, are altered and linked to the speakers themselves. And the impedance of the speakers, 8 ohm, 16 ohm, is about transference of power predominantly. That's the main purpose for it. If you plug a 16 ohm speaker into an 8 ohm socket, it's very unlikely you'll actually hurt your amplifier. What you're doing is creating inefficient power transfer. The power is getting wasted. So we want a perfect coupling match. So that never actually happens in a loudspeaker. A loudspeaker has a varying impedance. It's around, an 8 ohm speaker is around 8 ohms at the low mids. But as we go up to the treble, it could be as much as 80 ohms. So our low inductance speaker, like a low power speaker, has uh, a tighter coupling. It doesn't go as high. It might only go up to 40 ohms or so. Whereas a high inductance speaker with more voice coil windings or higher impedance might go up to 160 ohms. And so this allows you to have those two types of impedance curves. What that means in a tone sense is that one sounds a little brighter than the other one. But more importantly, because of the way things are coupled, it becomes a loose coupling and it changes the feel. We go from a tight feel to a looser feel where the power isn't being transferred as efficiently. It's very hard to explain that, but it's very obvious to feel it. And of course, with inductive attenuators, a lot of what we're looking for is feel. So you won't get a huge tonal difference. You'll get a sensation. And I would say, and I say to everyone, we can get technical about it, but that's my job done that for you, flick it, flick the switch, see which you prefer. You know, one of them is you're going to prefer simple stuff. Damping is similarly affects the impedance curve, but what that affects is, so instead of our impedance curve going up, 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 the damping is going up, 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 and stops it from getting any higher. And that's typically to do with things like the mass of the speaker, heavier speakers are more damped, or the surround, a stiffer surround is more damped. So those speakers are harder to move. So even though uh, the impedance curve might go up, they become more damped. And in this case, exactly the same. It basically adds a damping load on top of the inductive load, which allows you to create a difference in texture again, a subtle texture. So between those two, we've got four different modes and they're all going to affect how your amplifier interacts. So whilst this is on the speaker out of your amplifier, you can record straight from the DI out of your amp or any of that, and you will actually feel the difference because the amplifier's structure is changing. So it, it's got nothing to do with digital simulations or modeling, this is going to change how your amplifier interacts with the load exactly as if you had four different speakers. You know, low inductance, low damping, low inductance, high damping, high inductance, low damping, high inductance, high damping. So you've got four different curves, four different speaker interactions uh, to choose from, which I don't know if anyone else does something like this, but if they don't, they, they should do. It's, it's brilliant, it's absolutely brilliant. If you don't have, a DI out on your amplifier, no problems. We have a straight through on this and the output of this is full speaker level and you can use it with our hotline. And we're gonna be creating more products, but the hotline itself is already out and already ready. And that enables you to transfer this very high voltage, very high power signal down to a line level signal ready for recording. Now let me get, grab one of these. I should have done it in advance and I didn't. So I'll get you one off the shelf. 
So this is our Hotline Recording DI. I'm going to open this up. And in here we have this beautiful silver box, which simply daisy chains in the back of this. Very, very simple. And gives you a line out. So using these two together, you get a completely reactive system. This then enables you to go straight into your mixing desk, straight into your sound card, straight into your USB recording device, whatever you've got, whatever you like at line levels. It has voltage protection, so it will protect your equipment. So the voltage current that cannot get through this, no matter what you do with the dials, it will clip that. There's a little warning LED there as well, which will tell you if you're putting too much power through it, because it has two modes. In the 200 watt mode, it works with this um, unit, perfectly at high levels and in the 10 watt road it works like a tiny little load box with any of our other attenuators so this can work with the reactive load or with all three of our hot boxes perfectly fine so it's very versatile little unit it has level and tone the tone is a simple high-end filter to roll off the brightness because um, that's the primary complaint when recording especially if using one of the resistive Hot boxes that will enable you to get a slightly warmer, slightly more inductive sound. And if you're using inductive again, you can go further and warm it up. And we've got a ground lift because you never know what equipment's grounded and what's not, and what's going to cause a hum. Again, flick it. One of them will make a lot of noise, one of them will be quiet. Use the one that works with your equipment. Very, very simple. So, so there we go. That's our new reactive load and the hotline. And these two are absolutely fantastic. This doesn't provide speaker simulation, so you'll probably still want to use software, but we provide links to uh, a few different bits of free software on the website, a couple of bits of paid software, none of it's by us, just stuff we recommend uh, so you can get going straight away. Okay, thank you for watching. I uh, hope you buy one, use one, record something, you know, and if you do, please tell us about it because we would love to feature it.